Children, I would like everyone to gather around and close their eyes. That's including you too, Amelia. And allow me to tell you about a dream I had. Picture yourself. It's a warm, sunny morning, cherry blossoms, an endless bowl of pomegranates. You're strolling about your magical garden, circling your magical fountain of youth under a pink parasol. Smells of roses, sounds of butterflies. You see rainbows, unicorns, fluffy cotton kittens, and pretty puffs of marshmallows in the sky. You feel beautiful. You feel relaxed. You feel perfectly perfect in each and every way. From the corner of your eye, you spot a man on the far side of your garden. He beckons you. Carefully, you push your spectacles back onto your nose and decide to investigate. As you get a closer look, your picture becomes clearer. His smile is so charming. His eyes are so warm. His mystery so worthy. He lends out his hand. Without a sound and without thinking, you take it. He gazes deep into your soul pauses for a moment. Then he thoughtfully says, I know of a place that's more perfect than this world. It's a place of perfection, tranquility, and true magic, as far as the naked eye can see. And of course, you politely tell him, but I already have a place I'm perfectly happy with, thank you very much, and I wouldn't have anyone change that for the world. He carefully scoffs, and purrs. My darling, your naked eye have been covered by those ridiculous spectacles. Let me take you to a place so wonderful you dare not need to wear them ever again. You become curious. You follow him two steps to the left and then he suddenly tesseracts you to a different dimension in outer space where you see millions and billions billions of stars as you pass. The wonder of it all. And then you see it. Oh, the horror. The horror. Terrible heart of darkness. Where have you brought me? You look around, amazed by the wire, by the floor of wired mesh strewn for miles upon miles through the galaxy of stars. You see men and women bound to this web. Some scream in pain and agony. Some are bleached with fear. Some uselessly cry, and some barely move. But they are all very much alive. Beneath the thick scarlet water of the deepest kind, creatures are lurking. They appear, skimming the surface and extending sharpened fangs that tear through the airless abyss. They jump, cruelly hitting the steely mesh and grazing their teeth across the backs of these lost souls, over and over and over again. What's more, long millipede-like bugs the size of dragons drop from the ceiling of nothingness. No eyes, just fuzz and boils covering them from toe to toe. They creep and they crawl around the mesh, slithering against the anguish that results in more high-pitched shrieks and deathly cuts, some deep enough to reveal the white of bone. Sensing your fear, the man calls out for you. He's found behind you, standing before a building. A building of gold, a yellow considerably brighter than this hell, but so faint that you hadn't even noticed when you arrived. He explains. This was only a mere stop in your destination. The true beauty lies within this curious structure. You follow, crossing through the golden light, inside a clean room. The man immediately offers you a refreshment to recover from your journey so far. My darling, please enjoy this beautiful fruit. A smile etches into his face. 
You take a bite. But the moment the flesh touches your own, you collapse. You can all open your eyes now, children. Children? <laughs>